Hello everyone and welcome to the Toffee Blues, your source for all things Everton and welcome to another 24-7 news report with the headline news today being that Everton are interested in Galatasaray and Colombia defender Davinson Sanchez Sanchez uh, for Davinson Sanchez and are preparing a £16 million bid that comes from Ali Nasi Kukuk on Twitter uh, a not a very reliable source and I, I think it's waffle to be honest with you I know we have had interest in Sanchez in the past and it is something that has been a consistent thread throughout summers but for £16 million, after, yeah, a pretty good season where Galatasaray were arguably one of the best teams in Turkish football history points-wise, anyway, that is, I think, the, the best points-wise. But again, £16 million, I think it's a, a load of waffle, to be honest with you, for someone who, at his time at Tottenham, proved that although there is talent there, the physical attributes are very good, and I think the technical attributes are, are also there to be a good player. Uh, the mental side of it, had, he had some problems with mistakes, and I think it felt like sometimes he could really... He'd struggle with his positioning, he'd miss pretty simple balls. I'd be shocked if the club are willing to pay £16 million for him. I'd be shocked if they were willing to pay half that, to be completely honest with you. Um, with his track record, to be completely honest with you, in the Premier League. Especially if we would sign him as a replacement for Bramfwaite. Uh, again, we're not too sure on the whole Bramfwaite saga right now. I can imagine that will be elaborated on further in the summer. But I do think it's one where, take that one with a pinch of salt, if I'm being completely honest with you. We moved on some more exciting news anyway. Jaden Philogene's moved to Barcelona now looks complicated and unlikely, as the winger has given priority to a Premier League move. Everton, as well as Crystal Palace and Ipswich, have sent him an offer. Decision is expected soon. That comes from Fabrizio Romano. Um, I, I think it's interesting in a sense, because if I'm Jaden Philogene, I'm probably ruling out a move to Palace right now, and that sounds weird, but while Elise and Eze and Franca, I can imagine, is going to get more of a role in the team next season, I would be hesitant if you want somewhere where you can guarantee a start, and to be honest, I think on that right wing, Philogene can guarantee that here at Everton, to be completely honest with you. Ipswich is another one where their status in the league is a bit if right now. They have made some great signings in play in Amari Hutchinson, and of course, I believe their bid for... Philogene is a, a, 30 mil a 30 million plus double bid with Jacob Greaves as well. So that's a very touch and go one. But I, as I've mentioned in a previous video where I spoke about Philogene, being an excellent sign for Everton. Young has absolute bags of potential, bags of skill, real dribbler. And with him and Ndai, that suddenly the entire dynamic of Everton's attack changes from not really having people who can dribble and cause problems to having two players who could end up being two of the better dribblers in the Premier League in a sense of just being able to take on their man and drive past them. And I think, again, bringing Villagine in is a must, in my opinion, for Everton, especially with Jack Harrison's issues last season. I think having Harrison as more of a rotation player, maybe someone who plays against a bigger team like a Man City or something where we need someone who's going to drop back. But again, Villagine's defensive number is absolutely fantastic too for Hull. So someone who is willing to get back, defend, and then someone who could win the ball maybe in a defensive area and then has the dribbling abilities to really bring it into the final third himself. So I think, again, Villagine, it ha I think Everton have to do it. And now, coming from Africa Foot, Everton are close to signing forward Sekou Koita. The Mali international is a free agent after his contract with RB Salzburg expired this month. The 24-year-old is waiting on his fi for, fi for the final deals to sign his contract. Koita is an interesting one, mainly a ban bench player for RB Salzburg by the looks of it. Only started, I think it was nine games this season, may have even been less, but... In that time, he did really impress. A 1.07 goals plus assists per 90. Someone who Everton may be signing to bring off the bench, but then again, that is interesting with Beto, Carvalhoen, Chimiti. So I think there is clearly an idea then that uh, one of those, that one of Chimiti, Beto or Carvalhoen are even not in the plans or preparing to go without them. So I think it is an interesting one. I think on a free transfer, it's hard to really go wrong. And I can't imagine Coyte is going to be demanding massive wages to come be completely honest with you. So again, on a free transfer, it's hard to really complain about something like that. Moving on, Everton have set their sights on Ella, uh, Ellas, Ellas Verona right back Jackson Chatu, Chatua, Chatua. The Italian side, the Italian side are waiting for a fee of around eight million euros, as they only made his loan permanent this summer. Um, uh, I don't really know. Again, I'm, this is all coming from FB Ref, so it's again. Don't really take everything you see from FB Ref as gospel, but it didn't really look that promising, if I'm going to be brutally honest with you. It didn't really look like a, a one where it's going to be like, yes, this is someone who could help us 
really push on. I just don't see the the idea behind it. And I guess it's because it's a cheaper deal, only 8 million euros. But again, I really don't know what the club are planning with this. Um, I, if I was, is it a backup to Patterson or Coleman? We probably need to be looking for a starter in those positions, to be honest. But yeah, it's a bit of a weird one. Nothing really stands out about him. But again, it might be someone who, again, it feels like we're identifying players that are going to fit the system. And in a different system, again, he may flourish. So we'll have to see him. That comes from Tuto Mercato. Um, coming from Le Keep and Cyril Olivez. Um, er Everton are interested in 22-year-old Reims and Morocco midfielder Amir Richardson. Leicester and Udinese are also interested. But all clubs do not want to pay the €10 million euro asking price, which is a bit strange to me. Um, again, another one going off stats. Richardson looks a really promising player. Um, he looks really good in front of goal and it looks like a fantastic player when it comes to defensive-wise, when it comes to getting those blocks and clearances, someone who's going to get back and defend. Someone who can really offer that box-to-box -box nature that I do think Everton need, besides from players like Decore, and especially if Onana's going to leave. I think it's something Everton would really need. And I think for €10 million, Euros, that's nothing, to be honest, in nowadays market. I think that would be a smart move for Everton to make, and I think it's something Everton should be keeping an eye on. Again, not the biggest expert on Amir Richardson or on French football, but looks like a talent at only 22 years old. Um, moving on, Simon Bachowski. I'm sorry, I pronounced that wrong. Uh, Manchester City are currently not interested. Uh, sorry, are cur yeah, currently not interested in testing Everton's resolve for Jared Bramford this summer, as they prioritise other areas. Okay, again, I I don't want to sound like I'm just shrugging the news off, but again, what are we really meant to say to that? This doesn't shock me. That's exactly what I would have expected. Why do Man City need centre backs? I understand John Stones has had his injury problems. I understand that the depth, but the depth, Akanji, Ake. Stones, Ruby Diaz. The last thing Bramford wants is to just be a, a moving part in Manchester City system. Even though I do think sitting under John Stones, Bramford would be a perfect replacement to play that John Stones role of pushing up into midfield because I do think Bramford has the technical ability while also bringing that real physical power that Pep seems to really love in his back fours now, as you see by the fact that he's basically playing four centre backs across the back four. Uh, it's also now time to congratulate Harrison Armstrong, George Morgan, and Bradley Moonen. For all signing their first professional contracts at the club. Harrison Armstrong signs until 2027. With Morgan and Moonen signing until 2026. So once again congratulations to them. And hopefully we can see them maybe play some games for the first team in the future. But the final bit of news today is from BN Sports. And that's that Everton will face Roma in a friendly at Goodison Park on the 10th of August at 3pm. Again... Not a real big surprise considering the new owner's situation and what it looks like. But again, it's some nice news to see the new owner and see both clubs going against each other in a friendly. And I think it's a, a real positive sign for the future of this club. And again, I think it's a good sign for for the real... I think the game's probably going to sell well as well, getting to see Everton play such a big team like Roma. Of course, players like Dybala, Tammy Abraham, some really talented players. And I think it'll be a good friendly to go watch. So, yeah, on the 10th of August at 3pm, see if you can get yourself down to Goodison Park for what should be hopefully a good game of football, even if it's just a friendly. But thank you all for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. Follow us on Twitter at Everton Newsfeed. And follow me on Twitter at Callum Brannan 3. And I will see you all for the next video or live stream that I'm on. Goodbye, everyone.